Hello everybody and welcome back to another spoiler review with me, A Border Prince. Today, I want to talk briefly about the short story Endurance by Chris Raitt. This is a short story that's uh, concerning the characters from the Lords of Silence book, which was fantastic, if you remember. Um, hopefully you've read it. It's one of the best books they've brought out recently. Really goes deep into belief in Nurgle and their attitudes towards their their perception of the universe, I guess, and who they are and their place in it. And it's truly fantastic. Truly, truly fantastic. What this one covers specifically is the background of the cor- uh, the gallowsman. I nearly said the corpsman. The gallowsman, which in the Lords of Silence book, we don't know anything about his true origins. He's a, a loyalist artist that's turned traitor and joined with the Death Guard. So he isn't Death Guard. He's not a legionary from the Heresy. He's a, 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 you know, a space marine who has turned traitor, but he can't remember his past. But he's embraced Nurgle, you know. Papa Nurgle has given him his gifts and he's, he's living the life he always wanted to live. Here, we get his background, <laughs> which is amazing. His name is Brother Sarian. And he's, so what he's done in the story, Chris Wraith, he's done, um, when you read it, and spoilers, you know, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. He's combined, it's like the past and the present combined. And it's nice how he's done this. Okay, so what's happening is Brother Sarian is on this planet, on votive, what is it, 9, 10, 11? And they're, he, he's defending this imperial world. They've been, they've lost all their, they've used all their ammunition. The uh, local garrison force, the, the PDF, is at its, you know, almost annihilated. It's a swarm of zombies, basically, Nurgle zombies, coming at them relentlessly. Mo- most of his brothers are dead. There's a few left. They've got no ammunition for their bolters, so they're down to just using hand weapons and their fists. Yeah, he's reflected on the fact that, um, for instance, he mentions that, you know, some imperial for, uh, some imperial bureaucrat has de- decided that his life was best spent here. Uh, you know, they're waiting for re- uh, reinforcements, which are supposed to be coming. They've managed to scrounge together some troops, but they're not coming. And this is where it, it's nice how he intersects the two storylines. So it's just after the events in the Lords of Silence. And it appears that the warband has broken up uh, with all of the different forces going off to do their own thing. Dragon's got a small group of uh, Death Guard and a ship. And he encounters an Imperial transport ship and uh, attacks it. But the way he's written it, you think that he's coming to this planet where this Sarian is fighting. Obviously, because the Nurgle forces that they're oppo- they are opposing them. But it's actually the past. This is Dragon before he turned. So they land on the planet and they're confronted by Iron Warriors, in fact, as well as the zombies. And he's like, he's got a vague recollection of this place. It's like he's been there before. And then we flick back to the past before he was corrupted. We have him there fighting to to the last, you know, he's defending the last stronghold, which is an imperial cathedral. He's fighting to, you know, he's got no weapons left. And he's confronted by a spectre, basically, who he kills. And it's a marine. And he doesn't realise that it's it's him. You know, it's him. <laughs> you could say it's an apparition. If you want to look dead deeply into it, it's like a spiritual thing. Like it's, uh, it's, it's his own growing weakness, growing in the form of this Astartes with no armour, who's coming towards him. And uh, the first time he kills him, and the second time he's brought down, he's spent. He's, he's given everything to this battle, to this war for this planet. And there's no help coming. They've been left out to dry. It's a hopeless struggle. You know, you've got the the, the eternal entropy of Nurgle. <laughs> you know, um, the papa, papa's joy all over the planet of these these uh, Nurgle zombies, plague-ridden zombies everywhere. And he's in this imperial palace, uh, imperial temple, and it just it's just the end. And he gives up. He gives up. You know, and he embraces chaos. But it's lovely how he's done it. It's lovely how it's presented. It's, you can see why he did. And this, I can't ever, it speaks to the, the, the thing that the Death Guard are known as the Unbroken. And the fact that they all laugh at that. Because they were broken. They, they did get broken. And it was when they were in the warp. They were afflicted by the plagues. They did break. And that's why I think, I didn't realise it before, but 
it came to me reading this. That's what the message is there. That's why they find it so funny while they giggle and they laugh when <laughs> when they refer to themselves as this. And it made me think of them at the moment. And it's one of the best moments of Lords of Silence when they, uh, Dragon meets Typhus. And, you know, Typhon asks, Typhus asks him, why, what do you know about the Legion? Why are we called this? And Dragon gives some sort of rote answer, you know, like, we're unbroken because we never broke. And Typhus turns around to him and says, that's horse shit. And it was, it was brilliant. And now I understand it more than I did previously. It adds a lot more, I don't know, it makes them a deeper, more complex uh, group of, group of Marines. The fact that they are laughing at this because they did break. And they know, as well, it speaks to more the, the whole thing with Typhus. They know what Typhus did. He sold them out. He, he was the first to betray. Uh, it's great. It's truly great. If you love, if you loved the Lords of Silence books like I did, this is a fantastic addition as it adds to uh, one of the best characters in there. We get a lot more stuff on him, on his internal, you know, his internal thought processes. And yeah, it's good to know his background and his origins and why he is the way he is. Uh, when they get to the planet, they uh, they end up fighting some Iron Warriors who are on the planet. And that's when you realise that it's, it's actually uh, the future and that was the past when it's talking about, you know, when the Imperial forces were resisting this plague and the Iron Warriors have landed there. Now, the other interesting thing is, obviously, it's it's after the birth of the Great Rift. And Dragon says something like, you know, the Lords of Silence will coalesce again uh, at some point when there's a clear objective. So these guys never went. And it sort of sets to bed that the hope that I had that they would appear in the Plague Wars, uh, you know, fighting against the Ultramarines. They didn't. So they're on the other side of the galaxy from the rest of the Death Guard, I think, you know, more or less anyway. They're not with the main force. So that's a nice, because obviously uh, the White Consul's homeworld is on that side of the galaxy. So, I mean, I don't know what's going to come with that next book. I doubt we're going to get one this year from Chris Wraith. Uh, it'll probably be next year. But, you know, I think it was a surprise hit for them. Um, and it was so good. So to have this short story add into it is fantastic. Now, knowing my luck, it'll probably be included as part of the next book. But if you can't wait that long, and I suggest you try and do pick it, you, you do go and pick it up. Go to the uh, Black Library website. You can find it on there. Um, I was lucky enough to get the uh, Black Library Celebrations free handout book, and it was one of the short stories in there, which was a nice surprise. I didn't think it was about the Lords of Silence. It's fantastic. It's great. And I like the way he... He talks about his frustration and the fact that his sacrifice is meaningless. You know, he's going to give everything. He gave everything to this battle and it was nothing. And then Nurgle comes along in a visage and, well, not necessarily Nurgle, but, you know, this, this apparition of himself, this vision of himself, this spirit of himself comes to him and says, you know, just, just surrender, just break. We'll make it all better. And he's like... Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's it's a lovely moment. And um, yeah, the other stuff we get, obviously, is it touches on things. It makes them nice. It, it's building on the future. And I really like it. And again, Chris Wright with that book he did, with what he's doing with the Vaults of Terror, recently saw announced that in June, the new Vaults of Terror novel will be released with the uh, Inquisition, with the Inquisitors again, which is after the Carrion Throne. He's really doing some great work in he and Guy Haley are doing some fantastic work in setting out the new law and the new universe and making sense of it. Um, you know, this is a great thing that it was... <laughs> I mean, it was great that I read this and there's no mention of Primaris. You know, it's it's quality. And I'm glad that there was no mention of Primaris. It's good stuff. And I do recommend it. But yeah, that's all I've got to say on it. Thanks to everybody who's supporting me. Uh, you'll see your names pop up here. Thank you again for your continued support. Please remember to hit like. Uh, smash that like button. And uh, remember to subscribe and hit the bell as well so you get notifications when we do live streams and things like that. All right, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. And I will see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.